Time for the word on Wall Street. Top investors watching your money. Joining me now, Michael Lee Strategy founder, Michael Lee, and Walzer Wealth Management President, Rebecca Walzer. Rebecca, I end with you. I begin with you. I stole that from Neil Cavuto. He always <laughs> says that U.S. markets are closed in honor of the day in which we celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Today, futures... Their trading are up as we look ahead to another big week of earnings. Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley report their numbers tomorrow. What are you expecting? You know, Dagan, I, I, it's such a mixed bag. You know, if you look on Thursday, we had the 10-day ratio of advancing stocks to declining stocks, uh, 2.16. So that is a breakaway momentum that we've only had 25 times since 1949. And if you look at every time we've had breakaway momentum for the last 24 times, 23 out of 24 times, the whole year has been net positive. So that is a really strong bull technical indicator. But I still, Dagan, just see so many macroeconomic global problems. I just don't see a soft landing and a recovery this year. I'm really still quite bearish and negative. So it's it's a mixed bag. I mean, I expect earnings would still be uh, surprising on some of the fronts because, you know, expectations were lowered quite a bit. So we will get some some beats, some surprises. But the overall gist for me right now is still very bearish. Before I move on to my next topic, Mike, um, how does your view line up with Rebecca's on that? Uh, you know, almost almost exactly. From a technical standpoint, uh, if you're just looking at price action, the market is looking very constructive. But on a macroeconomic standpoint, it's looking like a train wreck. So f- for me, it's, it's how can I have my cake and eat it, too? And it's being positioned in defensive sectors and adding positions like gold and the 30-year Treasury so that if we do get a, a weaker dollar, rising stock prices, rising equity markets, mm-hmm. that my clients can still profit, where if the bottom falls out, uh, they're protected to the downside. So, Mike, I want to move on to home builder sentiment from the National Association of Home Builders is out on Wednesday. Uh, the expectation is that we'll hold steady, but it's still at the lowest since June of 2012. We also get building permits, housing starts, existing home sales later this week. Your take on the housing market, and particularly as an asset class, it's not liquid, but nevertheless, you certainly need to treat it that way. So, um, David, it, it's funny you, you, you say hold steady. It's, it's going to hold steady because I don't know that it can drop any further. <laughs> I mean, we went from the mid 80s to 31 on the National Home Builders uh, Sentiment Index. Uh, this is a horrific collapse, and that horrific collapse has meant a recession 10 times out of 10. Uh, it typically signifies a double of the unemployment rate and earnings that contract somewhere between 10 and 15 percent for the calendar year following that happening. Right now, estimates are for a over a 5 percent increase for this year. So at some point, those two need to, to reconcile, because when you look at, at, at uh, building permits, housing starts, new home sales, and home builder sentiment, every single chart there, it's, it's not like stock charts that are looking constructive. That They start in the top left and they end in the bottom right. They all look identical. It is horrific data. And, you know, if you think about it, this makes sense uh, in, in the fact that uh, during, the, during COVID, uh, with interest rates at all-time lows, particularly mortgage rates, and the way people wanted to live, moving from kind of this live-work play in a city, in a suburb, living on top of each other, to just more and more space, wanting a bigger home with more land. You know, that was a fundamental shift in the overall economy. And now with a 30-year mortgage goes from 2.8, 2.9 to 7.5 in certain circumstances, that's certainly going to slow that down, combined with the slowing economy and runaway inflation, uh, impossible to get materials to build build homes, skyrocketing the price. So a lot of factors working against it. And we look at ourselves now, uh, we are, in my mind, entering a recession. So this should slow down. This should make bring home price affordability down, uh, which would be good for first-time home buyers. But what I would say is, is people that have um, doubled their home prices over the last couple of years, you're going to give, if you haven't already, you're going to give a lot of those gains back. And I, I don't know that we're going to back to 2019 valuations for a lot of homes, but I, I do think a lot of the gains saw in the pandemic are going to be given back over the next couple of years. I don't know that that's the worst thing. Um, and it'll be interesting to see where mortgages mm-hmm. end up this year if the long end uh, of the curve 
uh, trades down significantly. You have some smart bond people saying we're going to see a 2% 10 year by the end of this year. And, and mortgage rates, for those watching, mm -hmm. are not based on the Fed funds rate. It, it has right. a lot more to do with where the 10 year Treasury is if you're looking at a 30 year fix. So if mortgage rates come down because interest rates come down dramatically, then the only way interest rates are going to come down dramatically in the long end is from a dramatic economic slowing, which is what I believe is going to happen. That could level out. Uh, the housing mar market, so we don't have this sort of volatility because you don't want to see a home that was 500 grand in 2019 selling for 1.1 million uh, a year ago back to 400,000 by the end of this year. You, you, you want to see a, you know, a steady 2 to 3 percent, maybe 5 percent growth year over year, but not this you know, up 20, up 50, up 80, and then giving half of that back. I mean, that makes it really hard to build new homes. Uh, and, and the housing sector, it, it's so significant in terms of the multiple supplier effect and people, you know, putting in new bathrooms, buying new furniture, um, all sorts of different things that people working on it. So it's, it's, a, it's a huge leading indicator for the economy because of its multiplier effect. Right. And there's, broadly speaking, there's very little inventory on the market right now. So it's very hard to gauge anything because people are not putting their their properties on the market for fear well because again they're still delusional about what it's worth um mike lee which what happens when you flood the flood the world with uh money these central banks mike lee rebecca walls are great to see both of you coming up 